So over the last year or so, I've collected around 200 disposable vapes that I've just found littered on the streets and dumped at the end of festivals. And I'm gonna show you how I've converted them into basically free battery packs. So I'm sure everyone's aware of how popular disposable vapes have become over the last few years, but nobody seems to know that they should not be disposable at all. And that is because they have fully rechargeable lithium ion cells inside of them. Now there's a few studies that are showing that about 5 million of these are thrown away each week just in the UK, which is about 260 million of them per year. Now that's enough lithium to make over 5,000 electric vehicle batteries. And that's assuming that you choose the biggest battery option that we have available at the moment. And it's also enough to make around 1.3 million average sized e-bike batteries each year, which is just absolutely mind boggling. A quick warning before we start, we're gonna be messing around with lithium ion batteries, which are known to set on fire and maybe explode if you mistreat them. So definitely only do this if you know what you're doing. And also because we're using disposed vapes, uh, they're also technically a biohazard. I've also skipped a lot of safety info and crucial steps just to keep this video short. And I'll probably upload a proper tutorial in the future, but until then, don't use this video as a guide. How about we crack a vape open and take a look inside? So here's a 600 puff elf bar, and they appear to be the most popular in the UK, mainly by how many I see littered all over the streets. And open them up is pretty easy. You can just pry up the bottom using some standard cutters and pull all the guts out. Now there's three main parts of these vapes. You got the sponge that holds all the liquid, the battery, which we're mainly interested in, and the sensor slash control circuit at the bottom. And if we tear down these chunkier 3500 puff vapes, we can see it's made of basically the same stuff, but a bit bigger. Now I've got plans to use 150 of these bigger vape cells to make an e-bike battery, so keep an eye out for that. To put it all into perspective of how capable these cells are, we only need about five of the smaller ones to make the same capacity as an iPhone 15 battery, or only two of these larger cells. So every time this many vapes are discarded, we may as well be throwing away a practically new iPhone 15 battery. So to prove what these batteries can do, I'm going to use 35 of the smaller cells to construct a power bank that supports 100 watts USB power delivery and can even charge a laptop. So here's the plan. We can think of a single vape cell as a low voltage, low capacity battery. You can't really power much with a cell of this size, but if we connect a bunch of these together in parallel, their capacities add up, allowing us to make a low voltage, high capacity battery. Now this setup would already be powerful enough to slow charge a phone, but I want to deliver a bit more power. So instead, we're going to make a few more of these parallel battery groups and stack them up in series. This will add up their voltages, creating a high voltage, high capacity battery pack. So to make this setup, we're going to need about 35 of the small vape cells, and we're gonna use a 3D printed enclosure to hold them all together. And we could manually solder all the cells together in the configuration that we need, but this would be pretty tedious. So instead, I've designed two printed circuit boards with loads of battery spring tabs on it, in the hopes that we can just sandwich the cells between these two PCBs and they will automatically wire up the cells for us in the exact way that we need. Finally, we just wire up a cheap USB power bank module and it's essentially complete. Here we go, here's all the bits that we need. We've got a 3D print for containing all the cells and we can see it's got these nice little springs on the inside so it can clamp all the cells in place. And we've got these custom circuit boards which have the little spring tabs on them and also the internal wiring to connect up all the cells together. And I've also got another version of the board which has a bunch of resistors on it, but I'll explain why I need these later. So first thing we need to do is rip apart 35 of these vapes and harvest out all their batteries. There we are, 35 vape cells and a big old graveyard of disposable vape remains. Right, now we can whack all the cells in the 3D print and we've just got to follow the same layout in the animation. Now I've got to be careful here not to reverse any of the cells because that will cause them to short circuit when they're all wired up and may actually cause them to explode. A slight concern that I had at this point is that the terminals of the cells are pretty tiny and given that the PCB spring tabs are also quite small, I don't think there's a good chance that all the batteries will make a good connection when they're finally connected up. So I basically had to come up with a nice easy way of increasing the terminal sizes of the batteries. An idea I had was to use this, this copper tape and it's got a conductive adhesive on it. So ideally it should connect to the tab and we'll have a much bigger area to work with. Cool, so it looks like we've got a pretty good connection on both ends of the cell and it kind of resembles a AA battery a bit now. 
Now to do this 35 more times. Lucky me. You might be thinking that we can now just sandwich the batteries together with them PCBs and we'll be almost ready to call it a day. But unfortunately, that could actually cause them to blow up. You see, these vapes might have been thrown away before they were completely out of battery. And if we connect together batteries of different charge levels, then they're going to actually try and charge each other to equalize all of the voltages. But my PCBs have nothing to limit how fast they're going to charge each other. So that's gonna cause them to charge at the maximum power that they physically can, causing them to get really hot and maybe set on fire. But if we have another PCB, which has little resistors between the cells, then these will resist the current flow and let the batteries charge each other nice and slowly. So we just have to give them some time and they'll eventually get to the same charge level where I can then finally connect them directly together without me burning down my garage. So that's why I got these extra PCBs made and yeah, we can see the little resistors between the cells. And to actually see if this is going to be a problem, we can probe each of the individual cell voltages and see if they differ. And yeah, they differ quite a lot, so we're definitely going to need to balance them out. Right, let's get the PCB bolted on. All right, she's all wired up. Let's just leave it for an hour and hopefully all the cells have, have balanced charged each other. Time to see if this whole balancing stuff has actually worked. Yeah, they're looking pretty equal. Okay, I think we can wire it up for real now. All assembled, and it's looking pretty decent. This is the power bank module we're gonna be using. Uh, I got this off AliExpress for a few quid, and it's got all the USB ports you'd ever need. Two Type A's, a Type C, a Micro, and even an Apple Lightning port. Uh, it, it sports 100 watts fast charging, which is pretty speedy, and it's even got a little screen to read out the battery percentage. The only awkward thing about these USB modules is that not only do we need to wire up these two power terminals, but we need these four other connections wired up too. And these basically allow the module to monitor each group of cells and make sure that they're all running safely. That's why I've added these little terminals on the PCBs, which basically just connect directly to each individual group of cells. So it'll be nice and easy to solder up really. Right, it's time for the moment of truth. No. It's definitely not the prettiest soldering job I've ever done, but it shall suffice, at least for the time being. So let's plug some things in, shall we? Uh, is this thing alive? Oh yeah, look at that. That's certainly promising. Look at that, super fast charging, fantastic. I've been messing around with it a bit more and we've got it plugged into my laptop now and it is charging it perfectly. All of that off of some little elf bar batteries that would otherwise be in the landfill. I think it's time to get this thing packaged up and get a little 3D printed case sorted for it. Here we are, it's all finished and is currently fast charging a phone and also powering my soldering iron. Now I've been doing quite a bit of testing with it and I've ran it down completely and charged it all the way back up again about five or six times and it's still working great. The capacity seems to be about 15,000 milliamp hours as it gives my 5,000 milliamp hour phone a full recharge about three or four times. And the best thing about this power bank is that by the time the cells go bad in about two or three years, I'll have easily have collected enough cells again to replace them all and just keep this thing going. Now there's definitely a few improvements to be made, such as using this new 3D print that my mate designed for me, which fits all of the cells in, but takes up way less space. 
but generally I'm really happy with how this has turned out. So to wrap this all up, this project does prove just how bad the disposable vape industry is, and it shows the sheer amount of e-waste it creates. And unfortunately it seems to just be getting worse recently, as there's newer disposable vapes that have huge screens on them. But hopefully this project will spread some awareness, maybe convince one or two people to use reusable vapes instead. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more content like this, because I've still got about 100 larger vape cells, and I'm in the process of making the parts to build a huge e-bike battery. 